In my readings, I've come across the term Deuteronomistic history. This is a mouthful. Please help me with this term. Nick, Deuteronomistic history is a major idea in the study of the Old Testament. Let's look first of all at how critical scholars understand this term. We haven't mentioned at all how critical scholars understand the Old Testament. But this is a good time to get a handle on how they understand the Pentateuch and indeed much of the subsequent history of Israel. For critical scholars who embrace the idea that the Pentateuch is non-Mosaic, indeed it's probably a compilation of uh, four or more different authors, they would understand that Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers are pretty much their own units compiled by different authors and editors and redactors over a series of hundreds of years. But then they understand Deuteronomy outside of these first four books. Critical scholars talk about a Tetratuch and not a Pentateuch. Tetra meaning four, penta meaning five. So critical scholarship understands the first four books of the Pentateuch to be their own unit and Deuteronomy to be its own units. They would understand Deuteronomy to be a 7th century BC document in its essence which was composed during the Josianic Reformation of 2 Kings 22 and 23, which we've spoken about earlier. That is to say, Deuteronomy and then the Deuteronomistic history has its own understanding in critical scholarship. They would understand Deuteronomy to be separate from this Tetratuch in influencing then the rest of the so-called primeval history of Israel. That is to say, Deuteronomy is the theological foundation and basis for Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings, the so-called second part of this primeval history that is the Pentateuch and then these four books or six books in English. Certainly, we would understand through the witness of our Lord and the witness of the New Testament that the Pentateuch is its own unit, that it's composed by Moses in the 15th century BC. So this term Deuteronomistic history has a idea that we simply cannot embrace. But having said that, we do understand that the book of Deuteronomy is going to impact in major ways these subsequent books that we're going to look at now, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and 1st and 2nd Kings. How so? These major themes that we saw in our study of Deuteronomy would highlight themselves in these subsequent biblical books. Most people, when they see the influence of Deuteronomy and the so-called Deuteronomistic history, highlight several chapters in Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings that are summary chapters that reflect this theology and the themes that we've seen in the book of Deuteronomy. And as a pastor, as you go to teach this section of the Bible to people, I want you to know that these summary chapters are, are very important and can summarize uh, these sections of Israel's history in, in, in very nice and compact ways. Joshua chapters 23 and 24 would be one of these so-called Deuteronomistic chapters in which ideas from the book of Deuteronomy are summarized. 
We already saw that in one of our earlier sessions where Joshua stands on the plains of Shechem and in chapter 24 says, choose this day whom you will serve. Where does he get this idea of making a choice today and serving other gods or serving Yahweh, the one true God? This is certainly saturated with ideas from the book of Deuteronomy. A second chapter in the so-called Deuteronomistic history from Joshua through 2 Kings that summarizes and recapitulates these theological motifs in Deuteronomy would be Judges chapter 2, a pivotal chapter for studying this section of Israel's history. Another chapter would be 1 Kings 8, where Samuel is struggling with whether Israel should have a king or not. 2 Kings chapter 8, a chapter we've spoken of already several times. Solomon's dedicatory prayer as he dedicates the Jerusalem temple. This is a pivotal chapter that recapitulates and reaffirms the major themes of Deuteronomy. The last of these so-called Deuteronomistic chapters in Joshua through 2 Kings would be 2 Kings chapter 17 that reflects upon the fall of the northern kingdom in 721 BC and uses the themes of Deuteronomy to understand why the north fell to the Assyrians using especially the ideas we've already discussed of blessings and curses. So to reiterate, critical scholarship understands Deuteronomistic history in a very different way than we would embrace. But having said that, we would want to see that the book of Deuteronomy theologically is the most important book of the Old Testament. This is a universal understanding of Old Testament scholars, that what Moses shares with Israel on the plains of Moab is going to have a ripple effect from Joshua to 2 Kings.